morning, beautiful people. It's, uh, G'day Groovers. It's, um, Sunday morning in Australia. It's currently 8.50 a.m. I've been to the gym and now I'm about to head down to the Brim Creek Farmer's Market to, um, work on the stall as a volunteer. Or, sorry, I'm just checking. I've got my wallet for Yes23, which is um, something we'll chat about on the drive. But it's, hello, Clancy. What up? I'm heading to the Grim Creek Farmer's Market to be on the Yes23 stall. I have got my wallet. I need my bottle of water because I'm a bit thirsty. I'll get a yummy, yummy coffee when I get down there. And I keep thinking of something I need. Hey, Scout, how are you, beautiful? It's a pleasant 10 degrees Celsius, 8.52 a.m. So, yeah, I thought I'd just take you for the drive down to Grim Creek Farmer's Market because, oh, that's what I wanted to grab was a shopping bag. Do I have any in the car? I have got one. That'll do. I don't need a lot of stuff. Um, grab a glass of beer. <laughs> what time is it for you, Clancy? Oh, hang on. I always think Clancy Australia because it's such an Aussie name. But you're in the US, aren't you, mate? Um, so Sunny is looking after the house. What is it that I need? I keep thinking I need something. I don't know what it is. I'll put a lip balm in my bag. Anyway. I have got a bag. I'll just put that in my... But I've got a tabletop in the back of my car. Um, it was... Gifted to me by my beautiful friends, the Andes. So the plan is the end room, which is kind of a storeroom slash shed at the moment, is going to end up being 5.52, perfect time for a beer. Let's go, Groovers. Pip, pip, and we're away. Um, oh, that was a – I don't normally – I haven't driven in these boots for a while. It is five somewhere. Look at that sky, guys. It's going to be 19 degrees Celsius today. But, yeah, I thought you might as well come with me to Brim Creek and um, just turn the Bluetooth off. We have been to this market a few times before on this channel, but today I'm actually – oh, hang on. I've got to put my badge on. <laughs> this my little I think you guys call them a button we call them a badge so it's a navy blue yes and a cream background they're all different colours they're pretty awesome actually so yeah I'm going to be uh, volunteering on the stall well, we're all volunteers but there's a few paid people at the top of the organisation Hey, Blissful. Yeah, it's a stunning day. I mean, I've got a just a long safe top on. I haven't got a jumper or a jacket. I've got a, I've got a jumper in the car just in case, but if the sun stays out and I'm wearing jeans and blunnies with my blunny socks, with my Explorer socks, and they're quite thick, so you can get quite hot. Um, but they're great for standing around chatting to people all day. In. Hey, Mel Mac. Yay. Look at all the beautiful people coming in. Hey, guys, you know how I've been saying, look at all the beautiful people coming in for a long time. I've noticed, like, there are two creators now and they're mods as well that are calling their community and their chat beautiful people. Now, look, as a comedian, I learned that there is no such thing as an original idea. But on YouTube, there's this pattern of people copying. <laughs> And it might be coincidental, but there's a lot of coincidences. I 
I mean, you know, they say flatter. What is it? It's not copying. Imitation is the highest form of flattery. I get that. But seriously, because I feel like there's someone that just watches me and runs to these bigger creators and they're like, Tori calls her audience the beautiful people. Let's start doing that too. Yeah, we've got beautiful skies. Beautiful skies. So I won't be able to read a lot of chat because this drive is a bit of a windy road, but um, when we get down there, I'll chat for a few more minutes before I head in and do my thing. We, the table is, or the stall is set up for the whole day and, and volunteers are sort of coming in dribs and drabs. Um, but I kind of thought I'd get down there a bit. Like the market... Um, Started at 8.30 and it goes through, well, set up was at 8.30. It goes through till 1. So I figure if I get there at like 9.30ish, the people that set it all up can go and grab coffees and pastries and do what they need to do. Um, and then I'll get a break a bit later and I can go and get some food. And... But if I walk past the pastry stall on my way and I'm grabbing a pastry too because I'm, hung I'm hungry. I've been to the gym and I just raced home, had a quick shower, got dressed and I'm hitting the road. I was thinking about making a smoothie before I headed off, and I was just like, no, I'm faffing around. Let's go. You're going to a market. There's food everywhere. So most of you probably don't know what the – in fact, everyone in my chat right now probably doesn't know what the – thanks for the thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, mate. To hit your G slide up your date. <laughs> that was a comedian. I used to work with an Adelaide years ago. He sadly died at 25, was insane, with cancer. Um, but he used to say that was quite funny. Um, although some comments under my AD stuff over on the ACDC channel, the Australian Controversial Drama Channel, uh, there's a lady on there who thinks I'm vulgar and rude and unpleasant. And I think she's a hoot at parties. I'm just going to check the audio. Um, sometimes I crap on and I haven't actually put up the... Aussie Tag, good morning to you. Sorry about that, guys. I had a feeling I didn't have my volume levels up and went to rectify that and somehow managed to premature. So, yes, 23 for those of you outside of Australia. I mean, you may have heard of it. I don't know. Um, we have a referendum on the 14th of October in Australia for Australians to decide whether or not we amend our constitution. Bring it the fuck on. Um, to recognise the traditional landowners of Australia and also to essentially give them what has been referred to as the voice which is an idea that they proposed, like our Indigenous Oswegians, who are culturally fascinating and interesting, and also the traditional landowners. And the purpose of The Voice is for our Indigenous population to weigh in on government issues and decision-making and to be consulted and 
here's the thing. I'm not, today I'm not going to be ramming why people should vote, yes, down their throats. But clearly I am supportive of Yes 23, very much so. But I'm interested to just chat to people and see how they feel about it because a referendum is a big deal. Changing a constitution is a big deal. But for you guys, the reason why I'm supporting it is because we invaded Australia. There was already an ancient civilization living here. The oldest living civilization in the world. And we invaded and we were brutal and we did horrible, horrible, horrible things. And there's plenty of information out there about how despicable our ancestors were. I hope we do. Oh, well, it, it's compulsory, Mac. Um, voting in Australia for elections and referendums is compulsory. So we will have an incredibly big turnout. <laughs> Everyone who can vote has to vote. Well, it's compulsory to rock up at a polling booth and have your name cross off the electoral roll. What you actually do in the booth is up to you, but the majority of Australians respect the fact that we get to vote and vote responsibly. Now, sadly, I would love to take you the more picture. And actually, fuck it, let's just go the picture as way. Oh, no, I said I'd be there around 9.30, so I better... I better be responsible and go the, it's still pretty, it's still countryside, it's just this is my favourite drive coming up um, in the state. Well, my second favourite, my favourite is driving into where I live and seeing the sand dunes and I know that I'm home um, and they're absolutely stunning. But my second favourite view is if I turned right when we get to the intersection, we'd, you'd see my favourite view. I've shown it to you many times, so it's okay. But, yeah, so we have a, um, a referendum in six weeks. And the only thing that you need to vote is either yes or no. That's it. The yes means you agree to amending our constitution to recognise the traditional landowners and to give them a voice in government decision-making. That's basically what it is. And the reason I support it is because we've had for, Aussie Tad, you might remember the exact year, um, under our Prime Minister, John Howard, who was our Prime Minister a long time ago, a thing came about called Sorry Day. And it was essentially an apology to our Indigenous population for how brutally our ancestors treated them. And don't get me wrong, there are contemporaries who are fucking horrible too. And Sorry Day was a really good first step towards reconciliation. And it's recognised every year, there's debate every year about the day that we celebrate Australia Day. Um, there's a lot of cultural awareness, education happening in schools, universities and even workplaces. But the thing is, we rocked up to Australia. The bloody first fleet rolls in and eventually we write a constitution and set up our systems of government and justice. Even though we'd invaded and we haven't given them a voice. <laughs> now, yes, we've had a lot of Indigenous politicians. Well, not a lot, but we've had many. It's awesome. But I still think the fact that we are operating under this constitution that we imposed on our Indigenous folk is fucked up. It's the last sort of 
marker that we still haven't really opened our hearts and our minds fully to reconciliation. And the proposal to create this body called The Voice and allow our Indigenous population to be involved in government decision-making without them needing to get elected into Parliament, because as much as I hate to say it, like any country, unfortunately, we have ignorant assholes who are fucking racist. Um, it's probably a lot harder, I would imagine, to get elected if you're Indigenous, unless you, like, have had a successful sporting career or something like that. And I think it's really important because I also think culturally our Indigenous folk built a culture on this country and the the climate and the uh, – it was Kev, sorry. Was it Kevin? I can't – I didn't read. I can't really read it because it's in small capitals. I mean, it's not in big capitals. It was a rad. Anyway, it was still a little while back. Um, but in any event um, – it was a good start, but now it just seems very tokenistic because, yeah, we're sorry, but even though we're sorry, we're still going to run this country under a constitution that was written by white people who invaded your country. And unless you get... But you don't live in a highly racist electorate, uh, you don't get to weigh in on stuff still. That's how I look at it. So for me, I have no, absolutely no qualms whatsoever in being a proud yes supporter because reconciliation is only going to happen when everyone feels equal and everyone feels like they're participating equally. And, and to just keep saying sorry once a year, that's not enough. And I want them to weigh in on decision-making because they know the land. Their entire culture is based on the land. And they're interesting to talk to because they're not resistant to utilising resources, for example. In fact, they're all for it. They're like, it's land. Like, it's been, we've been provided with these resources. But where they get, rightly so fucked off is if we are trashing their sacred sites and we're not respecting the land. And I got a tiny taste of it from an organisation that I was looking at working for and had a had three interviews with them, but they're developing a department next year where they are going to work with our First Nations people to utilise all of the land and resources in Tasmania responsibly. And they're not getting along off the land. Like, we're all for this, but don't destroy our sacred sites and native forests and, you know, do it responsibly. And there's other aspects of their culture that I think are really beautiful too, like, the saying, you know, it takes a village to raise a baby. I mean, they live by that. Their, high, their entire community raises the children. I had the privilege of working with quite a few different Indigenous populations in um, clans, basically, um, in South Australia when I was practising law there. And I was fascinated. And all of their stories and the, um, the, the, the things, the stories... Sorry, I'm a bit distracted. This intersection is a nightmare. Um, I mean, it's not busy, but it's just bad visibility. Um, there's stories, dream time, like the things that we can learn from them. And they're just so much more interesting than, I hate to say it, than ancestors of, you know, Poms and Scots and the Irish. They are. I mean, I've got a, an interesting family story, but culturally don't have these amazing cultural um, identities. Like we don't have it, – it's pretty mashed potato is what I'm trying to say. We don't have all these sort of – I mean, we've got songs now about Australia and everyone goes, oh, 
I get teary hearing that, including me. Like, I still call Australia home. It makes me pull my eyes out the second I hear the first note. In fact, my friend Peter's memorial that we went, my sister and I went to, and my brother a couple of weeks ago, his actual funeral that we watched, because it was in London, um, they played I Still Call Australia Home at the end, and instant bawling from me. My sister was like, oh, my God, look at you. But we don't have that gorgeous music, dance, painting thing that unites everyone. And don't get me wrong, I think these sort of melting pot countries like Australia are fascinating too because you have all of these different cultural influences. And now, you know, like everyone's sort of all mixed up, all these mixed race people that are just fascinating. But I still think culturally, like, our Indigenous, our First Nations people, that culture is just so rich and fascinating and we can all learn from that. So why wouldn't you want them weighing in on government decisions with their outlook on everything to do with life and the land that we live on and the oceans that we swim in and fish in? And Why wouldn't we, you know? So I'm all for it. And the other thing is I feel that, and I won't say that to anyone today, I really feel that what's your reason for voting no? Now, don't get me wrong, there's an Indigenous politician in Australia who's going to vote no. And I did listen to her speech as to why a while back, and I want to listen to it again. But I kind of feel like if anyone's going to vote no and explain why, I'd listen to an Indigenous person over in Australia, white Australian, any day. Or any other coloured Australian except Indigenous. But I, I can't come up with reasons why you wouldn't vote yes. I think the concept is exciting. I think it shows we're not just tokenistic and saying sorry once a year. We're actually acknowledging our constitution was written by white men for the white settlers of Australia and not without any input at all from our Indigenous First Nations people because they were being slaughtered by us and their children were being taken off them. If you want if you want to just listen to one of the incredibly brutal um, parts of Australian history, Google the stolen generation. Like my ancestors did I mean not my ancestors were actually cri um, criminals, they were convicts, but you know, any white Australian's ancestors did horrible things. And with Sorry Day, the people that said, I'm not going to say sorry, it's like, I didn't do anything wrong. Just because somebody, you know, 100 years ago did something wrong, why should I apologise? They're the people that are going to vote no, and they're fucking racist. And like I said, if anyone comes up to the stall today saying they're going to vote no, I'm going to ask them why. I'm interested. I want to know why. I'm not going to force my reasons for voting yes unless they ask me. I want to hear people's stories today. You know, we're currently dealing with a forecast at the moment of a 50-50 vote. Like 50% of Australians are unsure yet, undecided. That's why we're getting out there and just chatting to people in a very um, passive but open to their stories and opinions way. And bit by bit, some people might end up having a cup of tea that afternoon with their partner and going, you know what, like, they, those people didn't ram guests down our throats. They let us talk and they listened to us and... They had information there that told us way more than we already, or than what we knew so far. Like, 
the, the pamphlet they gave us explains it and it's not that big a deal. Like, it, it, it makes sense. I mean, I can't imagine any Australian not wanting Australia to be better. Australia has got mount, mountains of room for improvement. Every country in the world does. But thank fuck we're being proactive about this and and try to make an actual change that will further the concept of reconciliation because at the moment one sorry day a year in my view doesn't it's bloody awesome that we do it because there's plenty of countries around the world who have to have similar histories who haven't done the sorry day concept at all. But it's tokenistic in that it's not, it's not changing things. It's acknowledging things, but it's not changing things. Yeah, look, I am too, Aussie, but I think that um, the Yes campaign um, sort of, I'm just going to pull over for a sec because I'm just having a ziggy um, and the Brim Creek market is not far up the road from here. Oh, turbo chook. Um, yeah, open conversations are in information and proactive. Exactly. We do. We live in luxury on other people's misery. And, yeah, I mean, I personally haven't heard one person convince me. Well, not convince me. I'm not changing my mind. But I haven't heard one person yet say anything that is a compelling argument for voting no. And then there's a few people that are like, well, I'm voting no because referendums are expensive and they're costing the taxpayer all this money. Wouldn't that be a reason to vote yes? <laughs> to make the spending worth it, you know? Like, I find that a very strange viewpoint. I'm voting no because this is costing taxpayers money. Well, if you vote yes, then the spending is justified. And I get that a lot of people are undecided because they just haven't really been actively involved in the conversations yet, and that's why we're doing this. So for the next six weeks, um, I can't do as much YouTubing as I want to do because the few hours of me time I get a week, I'm going to be doing this. Because I just think that if, if Australians are informed and still end up voting no, well, that's the beauty of a democracy, right? But if they're not informed and they end up voting no, that to me is tragic. And even if we can just be good people who want our country to be better, and that's how the public perceive us at things like what I'm doing today. And we're not ramming aggressive propaganda down people's throats. And it's a very straightforward concept too. Like it shouldn't take people that long to make up their mind when they know exactly what it means, what it's about. It's not complicated. It's just inclusive. That's all it is. And I want our Indigenous First Nations people weighing in on government decisions. It doesn't mean they're always going to succeed, but they don't even have a voice at the moment unless they're represented in Parliament, although they're elected to Parliament. And unfortunately, there are a lot of racists in Australia, and if you are running in a racist electorate, you're fucked even if you're Asian or Greek or Italian. It's 
so that's what it's all about. Um, and I think it's a really great thing. And if on October the 14th Australians, the majority of Australians vote yes, it's going to make me proud of this country. Because, I mean, I love Australia, but I don't think it's the best country in the world. I'm aware of the flaws here, but it's where I was born and I can appreciate all the good things about this country. And there are many, many, many good things. But like any country, there's also many, many bad things. And to be honest, even if this uh, proposed um, voice is a bit of an integrity checker too and it keeps our government in check, how's that a bad thing? I mean, hello, corrupt politicians. Why Australians sit in their living rooms and on their computers abusing the fuck out of politicians and complaining about them all the time and how they're corrupt and how it's all about the money for them and they don't give a fuck about Australians. Well, isn't that another reason to vote yes? Because we're actually going to have people contributing without being elected to parliament and keeping our government in check, especially when it comes to proposals that might cause major environmental harm, for example. Like, why wouldn't you want an organisation, a body, keeping an eye on the government and participating in governing? Again, another reason to vote yes. I'm losing my audience because I'm political. I'm going to head to the market. I hope you've enjoyed I was like, oh, Tori's going to go political on her Tasmania calling channel. That's a bit racy. But I'm really passionate about this and I can't see any reason why this won't make Australia better. And there's a lot of things wrong with Australia, but the biggest wrong thing is the First Nations people, the way they've been treated by us, the fact that we've imposed our constitution on them, give them a voice, let, let, let's move towards actual reconciliation. And what an interesting, fascinating, colourful parliament we might have with the voice participating in conversations and making, helping make, influence legislative decisions and I can't see any negative in this. They're fucking good people. They're not, they're not going to use this proposal to be anything but helpful. They, they don't have the power, unless they get into parliament, to heavily influence a lot of government stuff. Good morning. How are you? you? Tell John when you go up there. That yeah. man's got a dog in the back. He'll need to park down near the fence. I will tell John that. Thank you very much. Which one is has got the dog? What car? Oh, he might be talking to them now. But I'll I'll head up there anyway. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we've got to give John a message. Good morning, John. Your colleague asked me to pass on a message to you that he mentioned, spotted the dog and said they need to go to the dog car park. They can stay there in the car park, but they can't take the dog. So I have to make it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I was just passing on the message much. from your buddy at the gate. Thank you. <laughs> He's a veterinary surgeon. He should know better. <laughs> well, but he was probably worried about the dog not having water. Did they leave the window down a bit? Because the dog's got a blanket on. It's a big dog. Is the window down? Well, yes. The windows are down on either side. Great, okay. It's not that warm. It's sunny, but it's not. True. True. But, yeah, it was, the vet Thank was... You for You're welcome. Have a good day. Um. All right, Groovers. <gasps> Some men's shoes. I saw your messages this morning, mate. I haven't had a chance to respond to them yet. 
Um, it's interesting, isn't it, Mel Mac? I mean, I'm fascinated too, and I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic. I mean, we have to be. Until I'm presented with strong, compelling arguments about why people would vote no, and they're not going to sway me because I'm very um, firm on this one, I want to have conversations with people who have good reasons for voting no, and I just haven't yet. And maybe today I will. This could be the day I might meet some people who are vocal and opposed, and I'm really keen to hear what they have to say. You've got to listen to every side, you know. And I mean, if anything, for me, the, the people that are adamant they're voting no, it's going to help me come up with gentle responses to their reasons so when i'm dealing with the next lot of people that say no if they use the same reason i'll have a nice little gentle rebuttal for them i mean that's how we evolve as human beings you know always learning and being becoming more informed and being able to utilize that information and help it form and shape our opinions like i feel that there's especially on youtube there's sort of this viewpoint that if you have an opinion on something then that is set in concrete and you can never budge like how often do we hear people hear people say well that's my opinion or it's just me it's just the way i am i'm not going to change and it's like but that's that's not evolving as a human being like I mean, people form their opinions at the start because of something they experience firsthand, something somebody close to them experiences firsthand that they talk to them about. They might study things and, and their opinions might evolve. But there seems to be this age where people get to where they're like, well, this is my opinion and I'm standing by it. And it's like, have you contemplated changing it? <laughs> like, you know they're not like setting concrete. You might be influenced by something. Something might happen to you that makes you change your opinion. How many of us have got opinions now that we didn't have when we were 20? And why did they change? Why did we do a complete 180? Because the circumstances of our lives changed and things started affecting us directly and things were affecting people around us, you know, and we started to evolve. You can change your opinion, but YouTube is this sort of, well, it's my opinion that you know, I'm standing by it. Well, that's fine, but just because you stand by your opinion doesn't mean it's not a shitty one. <laughs> I've had such a busy week. Look at this. I showed you my badge before for... um today but this was my badge yesterday i wrote that and drew the little love hub yesterday i'm i mean i'm volunteering in another community group down where i live because i just can't get enough of volunteering i've got this thing that hangs off my mirror and i pin all my badges to it um yeah so it's another community group it's a group of women who are basically there to help other single men and women, basically people who live on their own who need help with stuff like working bees, gardening, if they need help with meals being cooked for them, if they need someone to pick their groceries up for them. Um, they might just want company and a cup of tea with somebody. <clears throat> so that's another uh, little thing I'm getting involved in. So, yes, I keep getting more involved in volunteering and that means less YouTube time. However, tonight I am going to do another mushroom mystery episode on my um, laws of well, law of crime and cooking. I think I'm going to change it to the laws. I wanted it to be Tori and the law of because I just th thought it sounded better, but there's a lot of laws with crime and cooking. So I might 
change, just add the S on. Um, undecided, unlike I am with yes, 2023. All right, I'm going to be really naughty and have one more C and then I'm going to go. Very busy girl. I've got to stay busy to stay distracted from, you know, the other parts of our lives that aren't as fun or as meaningful, like work. I can't we all just get paid to be fabulous, you know? Why do we have to work? We don't get a lot of time on this planet, so why are we spending so much of it working? Um, oh, yeah, it'd be a good one. I'm also going to do another reaction. I've got two. It's going to be quite a long live. I'm not going to react to everything Stephanie does or says. But I'm going to show how she reports on tabloid media articles very irresponsibly in my opinion and then i'm going to um respond to a second creator and show how you can access tabloid um, reports and still be responsible with how you use them in your discussions i still won't do it but this other creator who's also an American chooses to, but is incredibly responsible. And then I'm going to end with um, a fantastic show that happens in Australia. I've, I've used them before on my channel the, who call out other media and media reporting um, and let them wrap up the live. So, yeah, it could be about a two-hour live. I've got a bit on this afternoon. I'm desperately trying to speak to a couple of friends of mine, one in San Diego and one in Adelaide. Um, I've also, I need help getting this tabletop out of my car, but I might call it a pizza night or actually I might get some food here that's already cooked. So dinner's really easy just to throw together. And I'm probably going to do like a two hour live, but it's going to be a bit earlier than later. Like it probably will be a str during Australian dinner time because I have work tomorrow and I like an early night on a Sunday. Oh, you did too, Scout. Everyone in this community does. Yeah, I saw your comments. It's full on, hey. That's the one, though, where someone commented that I was vulgar and unpleasant. <clears throat> I think we all have good hearts. That's why I call you guys the beautiful people. But now a couple of creators are starting to use that term. And I don't think it's coincidental. Okay, so I'm going to be reacting to Stephanie Harlow's coverage of the mushroom story. And AD, it's the old video of me reacting to him on small going to the loo and the bathroom scout. Um, I'll be here till one. Well, I don't know. I mean, I might leave a bit early. I'm not sure. The, the stall is from eight to one. I just think getting here now means that they can go and grab some food and coffees and whatever and um, there'll be a couple of other volunteers here. We've got stuff happening all over the state today. There's a lot of farmers markets on Sundays, so there's a lot of stalls and there's also um, people letterboxing, door knocking, um, wobble boarding, like standing out on busy roads, wobbling core flutes as people drive past, like... We're just trying to get the message out there any way we can. So, yeah, I mean, th this market wraps up at one. I suspect he was very drunk. It is a gorgeous day to visit with people. And farmers markets are beautiful because there'll be beautiful food and music and lots of great stalls that you can, you know, sample wines and cheeses and you can buy native plants and fresh produce and I've taken you guys for a walk around this market a couple of times now 
and it's lovely that it's just down the road from me. I mean, this whole area is just babe country, like the movie Babe. It's just all of these rolling valleys and hills with big fat moo cows and sheep and just down the road from where I live. I love it. And I'm looking forward to meeting some interesting people today. I'm actually going to be on a stall that's being run by Reconcilia Reconciliation Australia, so it's not actually a branded yes stall, but obviously they're very much for it because they are all about reconciliation. And we're getting there step by step, but this will be a massive, massive change and a really positive one. Yeah, I know the AD video, it scars everybody. Oh, he does have impressive moves. Yuck. I don't know what ever happened to the end of it, though. The live went longer than, like, I think I tried to download it or upload it and I only uploaded part of it. I need to see if I can go back and find the original. I probably did download it and then my computer blew up and it's maybe lost forever. Look, who knows? But I'm sure there was a lot more hilarity beyond the point when it ends. But it also probably is a good point for it to end. I mean, there's only so much vulgarity and potty mouth from me that you can handle i'm bummed that i didn't screenshot there were about seven comments that were being held for review and they were all highly critical of me and i released them all and then i was going to respond to them under the video and they disappeared youtube is very good at gobbling up comments it is going to be a fun day for me yes it is so i'm actually going to head off and meet my gang for the day um, and I hope you all have a beautiful day. Thanks for coming for the drive and helping me pass a message on to John about the dog in the car in front of me. Um, and um, I might see some of you tonight. I'm thinking, I'm anticipating it'll be from around... 5 or 6 p.m. Um, Australian Eastern Standard Time till sort of like 7 or 8 so that I can then have a, well, in fact, I want to be done by 7.30 So, because my favourite show is on at 7.30 and it's only two nights a week. Um, so, yeah, if I can get all of my afternoon stuff, phone calls and everything out of the way, Hopefully, I can go live at 5 or 5.30. It's not a great time to go live, unfortunately, for Americans and English folk, but, or even Australians, because we're all, you know, it's Sunday late afternoon, like, people have shit to do. Maybe they'll put me on while they're cooking dinner. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. Have a good one, and... Uh, if you see anyone out there on the YouTubes, just tell them to vote yes. It makes sense. I'll see you all very soon. Bye, beautiful people.